All right, today we're going to cover quite a few things, but they're all kind of, they're not that hard. So we're going to cover them all at once. You may need to pause and write some of this stuff down as we watch the video, okay? But first we're going to start with numbers, because this week on your quiz you're going to be having some questions where you need to write numbers that are from between 11 and 39. I'm going to show you how to do them all the way up to 99, but on the quiz you're only going to have up to 39, okay? There's a couple different ways that you have to do the numbers. So I'm going to start with the easiest one and work our way back down to the harder ones. The harder ones are the lower numbers. Uh, but we'll start with the easiest ones. So starting at 30 and all the way up to 99 follows the same pattern, and it's the easiest one. So I'll show you that one, okay? So the number 30 is 30, okay? And the way you add extra numbers, so let's say you want to do 31, you just take the tens digit, 30, add the word E, which means and, and then write the ones digit, which would just be uno. All right, so this works for all the rest of these. So if you wanted 32, it would be 30 y dos, 30 and two, 30 y tres, 30 y cuatro, all the way on up. So in order to do from 30 all the way up to 99, you just need to know the numbers for the tens digits. Okay, so that's 30, 40 is 40, 50, 50, 60, 60, 70, 70, 80, 80, 90, 90. All right, so any of these you can do this. So if you wanted to do like 55, you would say 50 y 5. Okay, so you can do any number in here as long as you follow that pattern. All right, so that's the easiest way. And the other ones that are a little more difficult follow a similar related pattern, which is why I started with those. All right, I would pause and write these down. You'll need them. Uh, although remember, on your quiz, you're only going up to 39. But it's easy to just know all the numbers up to 99 after that. All right, so... Let's take a look at the 20s, okay? The 20s all follow their own similar pattern, okay? So 20 is 20, okay? So in order to do a number like 21, you take 20, and then you would have like the and, like we just did, which normally would be a y, but because it's going to end up in the middle of a word, we change that Y to an I. And then because E and I sound similar together, to get rid of this E. And then you would add your like uno at the end. So all this, you get rid of these spaces, and all of this combines into banked E uno. So it sounds the same, 20 and 1. They write it all together as one word, but really it's like three words stuck together. Banked E uno. Banked E uno. And all of the 20s are done the same way. You do this banked, and then an I, and then dos, okay? Banked dos, banked tres, banked cuatro, all the way down, okay? So it's very similar to the 30s, but a little bit different with the spelling. It sounds the same, though, okay? Similarly, in the teens, you get from 16 to 19, do almost the same thing as the 20s, okay? You get 10, which is the ace, and then E, and then seis, okay? But because the Y is gonna end up in the middle of the word again, they're gonna compress these spaces out. Your Y turns into an I, and then in Spanish, they don't like to have Zs in the middle of words, so this turns into a C, which makes the same sound, but just looks a little different. So to compress that all together, you get DAC6, which is still 10 and 6, just all down as one word. And that works for 17, 18, 19. These are in a Quizlet. You can look at those uh, for the spelling as you want, but this is the pattern. DAC6, DAC7, DAC8, DAC9, right? Hardest ones are the 11 through 15. Okay, I call these the SE numbers because they all end in this sound, say. So you get like a root, which sounds similar to the ones digit. Okay, so this one is on, 
which sounds similar to the English one, just with a se, onse. And you get 12, which is doce. So it's do, like dos, and then se. Three is trece. Okay, so it looks like tres with a se. 14 is catorce. Okay, which it looks like cuatro with a se. And then 15, which is quince. All right, which looks a lot like cinco, but with a Q. Okay, or like quintuple in English. All right, so these are the numbers. You can use those to do a lot of stuff with time and those sorts of things. And it's very important to know them. Okay, so here's the pattern. Make sure you listen to that probably more than once so that you can be aware of how the numbers work. Okay, and you'll need these for telling time and, and counting and all sorts of things and telling frequency, which we'll get to here in a second. So I'm going to erase these. Okay, I'm also going to talk about uh, a couple more phrases that deal with time. Okay, so before we talked about something being, um, or what time it currently is, it is this time. Okay, this phrase right here, alas, is used to tell what time an event happens. Okay, so we're going to say alas. This is kind of like in English the at like five o'clock. Okay, at five o'clock. This is not this type of phrase. You would say ah. Last, and then you're going to put the hour here, the number for the hour, and then E, and then the number for the minutes. Again, sim very similar, uh, but just with A ah here. Instead of son last, it's at ah last. This is at. So if it was at five, you would put a cinco, and then if there was minutes like five ten, you could put there diez. A las cinco y diez. It's happening at that time. Um, you may need to talk about the event itself. So. You might say like la clase de inglés. So English class es a las cinco y diez. All right. So English class is at five ten. Right, and you can do that for any event. You can put it in front here. We just talk about the time. Okay. We also need to discuss the word cuánto. Quanto means how much. A lot of English speakers have trouble with this because it's two words that are one word in Spanish. Okay. And then it also, because it's Spanish, it has the four forms, the masculine, feminine, singular, and plural. Okay. So we got quanto and quanta, as well as cuantos and cuantas. Okay. And you're going to pick one of these depending on how, whatever the thing is that is how much. Okay, so if you're talking about how much or how many, this can also be many. How much, how many. How many pizzas, okay? Since pizzas is feminine and plural, you're going to use quantas, quantas pizzas, okay? If it was like a, uh, how many uh, bolígrafos, pens, this is masculine and plural, so you'd say cuantos bolígrafos, how many pens. Okay. All right, then the word I is also very important. This is spelled H-A-Y, but it's pronounced like the English word I, like your eyeball. And it means there is or there are. But it can also be used in questions, which in English you flip the word order, but in Spanish it's still just the same word, it's done with intonation and context. So it can also mean, is there or are there? Okay. So if somebody's asking how many of something there are, you can use your numbers that we just did and say, I, I cinco pizzas, there's five pizzas, or whatever you're talking about. You're going to see these in some of the practices that we do this week. Okay. All right, let's get rid of this. The next thing that we need to talk about is the verb tener. Okay. Tener, you've probably seen uh, in Duolingo and stuff. It means to have. Okay. And by the ER on the end, you can see that it's a verb, but it's irregular. That means that it doesn't follow the typical pattern that other verbs do. So instead, 
of saying like, I have, I have would not be tenno, like you would expect it to be. It's actually tengo, they add a G in here. And some of these other ones get I's, tienes. Tiene. These I's are extra, you would not have put them if it was regular. Some are normal, tenemos follows the normal pattern and tenéis also follows the normal pattern. But these ones, these ones here do not, okay? There's a name for verbs that do this. There's other verbs that do the same thing. And they're called stem changers. And we'll learn more about them specifically later on in the year. Okay. So just re you just need to learn these conjugations so that you can use this verb in a sentence. Okay. And then there's one more part to this. Just like in English, you can have the word have, which talks about possessing something. And you can add a to at the end to make it now, instead of possessing something, you now need to do some task. Okay. Just by adding this to, you've changed it from possession to being forced to do something. Same thing can be done in Spanish by adding the word K at the end, okay? So if you said like, tengo K, which is I have two, I have two, you could say like, run or eat or whatever, you put a verb after this, tengo K correr, I have to run. Okay, and you can use this to talk about anybody. Tenemos que correr. We have to run. Tienen que correr. They have to run. Any action can go here. Okay. Um, so keep that in mind. You'll see this plenty on homeworks and things and quizzes and stuff. We're going to use this a lot more going forward. All right. And last, we were going to look at some frequency phrases. These are just talking about how often something happens. We've got Todos los días, every day, literally all the days. De vez en cuando, which means sometimes. It doesn't really translate to English, except to just do the whole phrase at once. Nunca, never, siempre, always. Muchas veces is like a lot of the time or frequently. And sacar, this one just happens on homework. Sacar buena nota or sacar mala nota means to get a good grade or to get a bad grade. And this is a verb, so you can conjugate it. Saco una buena nota, I get a good grade. Um, or saco una mala nota, I get a bad grade. You'll see this on homework uh, this week, and so it's important to know what they're talking about here. Okay? All right. Um, then, this will all be practiced throughout the assignments that I'll post. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know so that we can take care of any confusion. All right? But that should cover it for this week.